Today we will be talking about the trigeminal nerve. We will be discussing only V1 and V2 today, which is the ophthalmic and the maxillary branch. You'll notice on these slides that I have both my name and Professor Lamoureux's name. Professor Lamoureux taught head and neck anatomy for many years and was kind enough to share many photos with me. So I want to thank her for that. It's one of my favorite proverbs. Here's a question for you. Which system causes muscles to contract, stimulates glands to secrete, and allows for sensations such as pain and touch to be perceived? If you said the nervous system, you are correct. Let's quickly review the CNS, the central nervous system. It's composed of the brain and the spinal cord. The major regions of the brain are the cerebrum, which is the largest portion of the brain, and it coordinates sensory data and motor functions and its many aspects. The cerebellum is the second largest, and it produces muscle coordination, maintains muscle tone and posture and balance. We talk about the brain stem, we talk about the medulla, which is closest to the spinal cord, which is involved in the regulation of the heartbeat, blood pressure, and breathing. Pons connects the medulla and the cerebellum and higher brain centers. Cell bodies from the cranial nerve 5 and 7 are found in the pons. When we talk about the midbrain, we're talking about relay station for the for hearing, vision, and motor pathways. Diencephalon, thalamus, and hypothalamus, these links link the nervous system to the endocrine system. Here's a question. An important structure containing nuclei involved in the regulation of sleep is the, the correct answer would be C, pons. This helps the regulation of sleep. Again, you may want to review pages 182 through 188 in your textbook to review the nervous system. So let's talk about the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve number five, and it's the most important nerve to dentistry. It is a mixed nerve. It has sensory fibers to teeth, mucous membranes of the oral cavity, nasal cavity, and skin of the face. Motor branches are to the muscles of mastication. There are three main branches of the trigeminal nerve. Again, as I mentioned already, today we'll just be talking about the ophthalmic division, which is also referred to as V1. And this branch is sensory only. And its exit point is the superior orbital fissure, which is part of the sphenoid bone. The maxillary division, which is V2, is also sensory only, and this exit point is the foramen rotundum. Remember, it is round, rotund. When you're at your max, you're rotund. The mandibular division is V3, and this is both sensory and motor, and its exit point is the foramen ovale, which is also part of the sphenoid bone. I believe you saw this slide last week. This is the exit points for the trigeminal nerve, the ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular. This nerve arises from the ventral surface of the cerebral pons. 
then travels forward and downward to a ganglion known as the trigeminal ganglion or the semilunar or Gasserian ganglion. At this point, the sensory fibers divide into three main branches and the motor root fibers become part of the mandibular division. Remember I mentioned that V1 and V2 are sensory only. V3, which is the mandibular division, has motor the, and it's part and it's for, excuse me, the muscles of mastication. So when we talk about the ophthalmic division, V1, it's afferent nerve, it is the smallest and it's sensory only. Again, its exit point is a superior orbital fissure. It has three main branches, the nasociliary, which is the nasal mucosa, ethmoid and sphenoid sinuses, skin of nose and eyeball, the frontal, for the conjunctiva, skin of the eye, forehead, part of scalp. It has two divisions, the supraorbital, which is from the forehead and anterior scalp, and the supratrochlear, which is from the bridge of the nose and medial portions of the upper eyelid and forehead. Both of these exit the skull through the foramina of the same name. The lacrimal, which is responsible for the production of the lacrimal fluid or tears, innervates the lacrimal gland. Here's just a picture of the divisions of the, the branches, I should say, of the ophthalmic division. Here's just another picture. And yet another one. You can see that V1 is for the nose and forehead. So if we review the ophthalmic division, it leaves the skull through the superior orbital fissure, it's sensory nerve only, and it includes the tip of the nose, which is the nasociliary branch, the eyes, which is lacrimal, and the forehead, which is frontal. That's it in a, in a nutshell. Now let's talk about the maxillary nerve, which is V2. This is also sensory only. It innervates the maxillary teeth, bone, periodontium, and associated soft tissues, mucous membranes of the maxillary sinus, and the nasopharynx, the hard and soft palate, skin of the lower eyelid, upper lip, side of nose, and part of the tonsillar area. Here just shows the branches. If you think about zygomatico-temporal, it makes sense that it would go from the zygomatic area to the temporal area. Zygomatical facial, the cheek. And when we first started in anatomy and physiology, excuse me, in, in a neck anatomy and physiology, we talked about words like posterior, superior, alve alveolar. Posterior would mean in the back, superior, upper, alveolar bone. Nasopalatine, Think about nose and palate, greater and lesser palatine, middle and anterior alveola. It would be middle and anterior superior alveola branches, be more appropriate, and the infraorbital, which would be below the orbit. The maxillary nerve leaves through the foramen rotundum. It enters the, terocal, the tero, terocopalatine fossa where it divides into main branches. The nerve trunks is formed in the pterygopalatine fossa by the convergence of many nerves. Pterygopalatine branches 
two short trunks that pass through the pterygopalatine ganglion. This ganglion lies just inferior to the maxillary nerve in the pterygopalatine fossa. This ganglion is a relay station for parasympathetic fibers of the facial nerve. There are five branches on the other side of the ganglion. Lateral nasal mucosa of the nasal cavity, nasopalatine, greater and lesser palatine, and the pharyngeal, which is the nasal part of the pharynx. Here's that ganglion, that relay station. Okay, let's talk about the different branches. Here's the nasopalatine nerve. This enters the nasal cavity through the sphenopalatine foramen. It crosses the roof of the nasal cavity, travels along the septum, then floor of the nasal cavity. It passes through the incisive canal and enters the oral cavity through the incisive foramen. Think about the lingual of teeth 8 and 9. There's the incisive papilla. Right underneath the incisive papilla, that's the papilla that can get burnt when you're eating pizza. Underneath there is the incisive foramen. The right and left nerves enter through the same opening. This supplies the mucous membrane and the lingual gingiva of the premaxilla. The premaxilla is canine from canine. If you remember correctly, I said for the most part head and neck anatomy makes sense. Mental, the mental region is the chin. You have the mental foramen. On, coming out of that is the mental nerve. However, this is one of the exceptions. The nasopalatine nerve comes out of the incisive canal. But if you look at the picture, it's right there under the nose and part of the palate. So again, it enters the oral cavity through the incisive foramen and it's called the nasopalatine nerve. Here's just another picture of that.